Yeah, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Denali, aka Don Squally. Uh, back at y'all with part number two of the Duck Bill spoiler uh, build. Now I ended up doing a little bit more uh, reconstruction here. As you can see, now the original, um, the original plan, um, I'm going to put a clip of it on the screen here, was to go back uh, to the back of the trunk, as you guys can see, and... At first, I like that, but, you know, I have had this thing sitting on my coffee table, and every time I walk past it, I have a different idea, and um, my idea was to kind of shorten up this area right here, make it a little bit smaller, and as you guys can see, I just think it's a little bit cleaner, and uh, I kind of just like the look of it. Now, as I said, this thing was sitting well it is sitting on my coffee table and every time i walk past it i have a different idea um so i think i am gonna revise this once more before i go and cut the metal and as you guys can see on this edge right here it kind of v's in a little bit now the original design did have a bit of a v towards this way now what i'm gonna try to do is i don't know if you can see but there's a little bit of an edge here so i'm gonna try to carry on this corner right here a little bit farther out this way and then have this side kind of run parallel parallel yeah parallel to this side of the trunk right here now I am going to keep all these stencils just in case it doesn't work out for me. Now these ones are actually pretty nice. Right here there's a bit of a gap but I'm going to get some bendable metal, close that up, ticky tacky. And I actually really like the way that this looks man. I just wish that this line right here kind of went with the trunk line a little bit more. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to do today. I'm going to do all that off camera so I'm going to come back once this is all together. And then we're going to go and uh, try to track down some metal suppliers, man. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is the third and hopefully final, um, I don't know, I guess, rendering of this spoiler. So basically all that I did was I just made this line a little more out towards the edge of the trunk on either side as opposed to it going inwards like that. Now it's... A little straighter it's not quite even the whole way but I think it'll be uh, close enough now the only thing I'm worried about is when I go to the metal shop if they're gonna be able to cut these really really tight uh, I guess ends right here but I'm gonna save the other template just in case they can't do that or it's causing too much of a problem bending at the end here um, I'll give them this one because these edges are a little bit I don't know, they look like they'll be easier to cut, but I don't know, hopefully I don't change this because it seems like every time I walk past it, I want to change it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is going to be hopefully what gets welded on the trunk. So next time you guys see me, hopefully I'll be on my way to some kind of metal cutting shop. Okay, so I was going to take you guys for the drive with me, but really there was nothing much to see. I ended up buying this sheet of metal right here. Sorry if that was a little loud for the camera. I ended up buying this sheet of metal. Now this is 16 gauge, which is quite thin, but the whole sheet itself is a little bit heavy, which kind of worries me, but... I'm not really going to concentrate too much on the weight right now. I'm just going to see if I can get this thing cut out and together. Uh, and once everything's welded up, then I'm going to weigh it compared to the stock spoiler. Um, I was going to get the company that I bought this piece off of. I was going to get them to cut it, but they basically said they were just going to be using a jigsaw with a metal blade, which... I mean, I, I don't really have to pay them to do that. I can do that myself. I was hoping they were going to have some kind of special machine that they were going to use or like a giant belt, like, you know, one of the ones with the belt saw blades on it that you can put through on a table. But um, I'm going to use this for now. Now, my hopes was to get some sort of a table and mount this upside down so that the blade's sticking up like this. And then that way I could feed the material through this way. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that for this uh, particular cut right now because there's a lot of round curves and stuff. And then I got these pieces uh, on each side. So um, for now, I'm just going to do it by hand with this, see how long or how easy it is to do. And um, hopefully we can get these pieces cut out. Now, the reason that I ended up going with a 16 gauge is that uh, they said it would 
uh, there's l less potential of burning right through the metal with this material as opposed to, I believe 18 would have been the next thin thinner metal. Uh, so yeah, man, this is just, uh, you know, the route that we're going to go for now, I might end up doing a, a different like version of this with a lighter material but right now the weight's not really an issue because actually if you guys watch my track videos i was getting a lot of wheel spin right off of the bat and i think that that's because i took out my seats uh my rear tire everything like that so there was really no weight in the back and the tires were just spinning like crazy so we're just gonna cut it right now um i'm gonna do a couple practice cuts with this and then get back to you guys and let you know how it went Okay, so it's going pretty slow, but it's definitely going. Uh, these are the two side pieces that I got cut out. I found when I get right to these corners, things kind of vibrate a little and it kind of, the saw gets a little binded up. But uh, what I'm now gonna do is just try to cut out these big shapes now. Those were kind of the little test pieces in case I messed up. I had lots of room to uh, redo them, but I mean, it looks pretty good. Uh, a little wobble, like, wobbly but i'll be able to grind down all those edges and it looks like i have some some uh, material left over to make a couple catch cans man so uh should be good i'm just gonna continue on here uh, a little dust on the lens i'm just gonna continue on here and uh, show you guys what it looks like once everything's finished okay so these are all my cuts uh it took me all of about an hour and i think three blades um so this is the the back part that goes outwards obviously the two sides and then the the piece that goes on top um i have a lot of extra material so i'm probably like i say gonna make a couple catch cans uh just to practice on now all of this stuff um when i put it on here and lift it up it weighs uh, maybe 10 20 pounds i'm gonna actually weigh that now i already sold the spoiler that came off of the gray trunk I actually sold it for exactly what i paid for the gray trunk so the trunk right now cost me absolutely zero dollars which is definitely a bonus um so i think what i'm gonna have to do is that when i pull the trunk off of my car and um i'll just weigh the two trunks side by side if i remember to do that uh, but what i gotta do now is go upstairs get the trunk and i marked out where i want to grind off the metal or the paint down to the metal so i'm gonna grab my grinder and then just start grinding all the paint down so that I have a nice uh, clean surface to start welding. Hokey dokey so I just took the paint down to the bare metal here. Uh, nothing too crazy. I just wanted to be able to have a nice surface to mate to once I start uh, welding here but in order to do that I have to get my welder out of the box set everything up uh, so I'm gonna go ahead take care of that right now let me just move out of this wind I'm gonna go ahead take care of that right now like I say I might do um, some catch cans for practice or I might just practice on these pieces right here and once I get confident enough in uh, my welding capabilities we are gonna try to put all of that metal on to that trunk so yeah man i guess uh let's get to All it right, it's been a couple weeks since that last clip and i did a little bit of research online and um really just how to approach this now i've done a few things differently since the last video i went out and got myself a sheet of 20 uh this is 16 gauge which i had originally cut everything out of i went and got a 20 gauge sheet which is quite a bit thinner you can see uh with the cutting it kind of warps a little bit but the thing is about this it's going to be quite a bit lighter and i'm going to be able to actually flex this wing part uh quite a bit more in order to get a little bit more of a curved shape on here uh so i think this is going to be the way to go this is still going to be 16 gauge so that the back here uh this is going to be mostly the support um, so another problem that I had is the steel on this uh, trunk is rather thin. I'm going to say probably a 22 gauge. It's pretty thin, especially since I took a lot of it off uh, with the grinder, which I actually learned I shouldn't have done quite as aggressively. The way that my welder is set up is in order to even weld a 20 gauge uh, thickness, I need to run, uh, you know, some form of argon. It's usually 75 
uh, 25 mix would be the best one for me. Uh, but since I'm going to try to do this with a flux core, I'm going to use a 0 .030 wire, which is pretty thin, should keep the heat down a little bit. As you can see, they don't even recommend that for here. But my original plan was to weld all the way across this seam uh, just continuously and uh, then grind down and then that would be my finish but instead what I think I'm gonna do is just tack weld every like three or four centimeters or and uh, whatever you want to you know I'm gonna do it just randomly across uh, wherever I think is gonna be the best and then after what I'm gonna do is use some short strand fiberglass just to fill in the cracks and everything like that. And um, you know, that will be my finished edge and then I'll be able to sand that down and everything. And I think that will probably be the easier way to go because when, especially when you're welding, uh, you know, with gas or not, with such a thin metal, you run the, the risk of warping it and stuff like that, which I don't really want to have to deal with that and uh, you know maybe we'll learn a little bit of body work along the along the way as well uh, so what I have to do now as you guys saw I prepped that all up I'm gonna just uh, grind this edge down a little bit so that I have a nice clean edge to work with here then I'm gonna take some grease and wax remover clean everything down and um, I'm gonna get the welder out and uh, I guess start laying some small tacks on here man so I'm pretty excited and I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are too because I've been getting crazy messages about this uh, trunk build so here we go alrighty so um, basically if you guys saw my video where I was at Harbor Freight, I think it was the test pipe install video, you would have saw that I bought this little magnet here. Now the reason that I bought that is, this thing's actually a really handy tool. It's got these bolts that you can loosen and tighten, change the angle, and as you can see, I was able to get the exact angle that I need with this from this fin here on there so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the welder I'm gonna tack it up right in the middle I got some grease and tar remover I'm gonna go over this with um, and then I'm just gonna once I get the center tacked here I'm just gonna move this magnet down just a little bit and then I'm gonna be able to uh, pretty much ensure that this angle right here is the same all the way across and obviously I'm gonna center it out um, on either side and um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that, man. So uh, I guess I'm gonna set up my welder and get to tacking. Alrighty, so I just did a couple tack uh, test tacks. And as you can see, I blew through a couple of spots. Um, this is the penetration on the back, which is good, but right here you can see, it's a little hot still. But right here you can see I almost blew through it as well, um, but it should hold. Uh, I know that trunk's probably going to be quite a bit thinner than this stuff is, especially after I ground the hell out of it, but I'm going to do a couple of test tacks and uh, hope for the best. Alrighty, so hopefully the welder's not too loud for you guys. Um, so I have everything set up the way that I want. I'm just going to do a couple of test tacks in the middle. And uh, hopefully everything goes good. Now I do have a bit of a gap along some of these lines. So I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of an issue. But uh, I'm going to try to concentrate a majority into the heat of the heat into this thick piece here. And uh, see what happens. Alrighty, so those first couple of uh, tacks went surprisingly well. Uh, this one was my very first one. I didn't really stay on quite as long as I should have. Uh, this one looks like we got a little bit of uh, contamination. I know that might be the end of the wire sticking out there, but the rest, if we come around the back here, um, looks like we got some good penetration. Like I said, I wanted to concentrate more of the heat into this top panel as opposed to the bottom. Um, this one's not too too much. That one's almost nothing. Um, but yeah, that actually turned out really good. We didn't blow a hole through any uh, of the welds there, which is you know what I did over there. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just uh, continue on along the side and just get this curved edge um, where I want it and uh, we should be pretty good to throw the sides and the top piece on here, man. So I'm uh, pretty excited about this. Alrighty, so this is what uh, just the the wing looks like tacked on. Actually looks pretty dope from the back, but I think uh, probably look a little better from this. Actually, you know what? I don't even think it looks that bad just like that, man. Um, but we got everything tacked on here. And it looks pretty good. I tacked it on just a little too too much this way on this edge, so I had to grind it down, re-weld it on, but that's okay with uh, right just like that. Uh, I got these side pieces right here, as you can see. Our angle is looking pretty much on point. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is get the big piece that everything's under just underneath here i'm gonna get the big piece that comes down like that maybe tack it at the top in a few places and then see uh how these side pieces are gonna line up now this is the more rigid piece of metal these ones are kind of gonna flex a little bit easier so um yeah i guess i'm gonna figure that out right now and get back to you alrighty so uh, I've just got another magnet holding this piece in right now and as you can see basically what I did is I just have this piece as this is the reason why I wanted to cut a thinner piece because you can see it's bending a little bit better I think I'll be able to get the edge just a little easier uh, so what I'm gonna do now I got to take this off and uh, wipe everything down with the wax and grease remover just so you can see there's some rust I'll grind that off too and um, Basically what I'm going to do is just put this on where I think it's perfectly center and then I'm just going to start from the middle, tack here, tack here, tack here and that's pretty much the reason why I wanted this lip to be just a little lower. Now you can really see this cut right here was a little rough. This thinner metal was, oh, this, this thinner metal was a little harder to cut. Uh, without the blade jumping around, but that's okay. I'll be able to grind down all these edges once I get everything tacked on here uh, So what I'm gonna do is just take this off. I'm gonna uh, You know grind it down with maybe a wire wheel make sure everything's nice and clean on both sides so it doesn't rust and um, I guess throw this thing on here, man Alrighty, so I got everything pretty much where I want it. I don't know if you guys can see me I got everything pretty much where I want it just held on together by these ties I'm going to tack everything up and just show you what I'm going to have to do afterwards because uh, my cuts here weren't very good. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me over the wind. Uh, so basically what I wanted to show you guys is right here, my cutting was really wobbly. Um, this is the second sheet that I picked up, uh, the thinner sheet, and I was kind of in a rush to cut it, uh, which I shouldn't have done. As you can see, this one behind it is quite a bit better, which is actually going to be the one uh, that you're going to see from the back. Like that edge is almost perfect. I'm pretty happy with that one. Uh, but back here not so much, but that's okay because I got some body filler that I'm going to be putting on all of these cracks and everything um, So next up really the only thing left to do Is get these little side plates and uh, That looks like that's about it right there and figure out which way it is that I have to put it on yeah, it's definitely this way and which side goes on which and basically tack those up there now once I get everything tacked up I'm gonna go in and grind out all these little imperfections and grind down the sides before I put body filler on it but um, I guess I'm just gonna put the camera down tack these sides on man alrighty so uh, this is what I have so far as you can see I got everything tacked on now we had a few issues as you can see on the side, we had quite a bit of blow by there. Uh, we still had a bit of fusion, should be enough to keep it tacked to the trunk, but everywhere else looked 
fairly decent uh, as you can see a little more blow by just on these little corners here but uh, what I'm gonna do right now is take a wire wheel uh, sand all this down and then I'm gonna get my grinder and just grind all these edges and everything up here so that it's all nice and flat and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like then and then all I'm gonna have to do is probably body fill this uh, but I'm gonna actually look at how much footage I have I may might actually make a part three of like body filling sanding and then actually uh, wrapping and putting it on the trunk but um, yeah we'll see man I'm gonna I'm gonna like I say grind everything down nice and flat or as flat as I think I can get it without going through the welds uh, as you can see we got a bit of overlap in here so I got to clean that up uh, sort of the same on the other side so I'm gonna do that and uh, show you guys what it looks like Alrighty, so this is what I have so far. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I kind of just ground down all of the little welds uh, just a little bit so that they were nice and flush. That way, when I run some body filler over here, um, that'll be nice and uh, flush. As you can see, she's on there mint. Uh, I actually lifted the trunk. Let me see if I can get it from here with the camera. Bruh. That's one-handed right there, so that's not even too much heavier. Uh, I know the, uh, you know, I, I was lifting the trunk by hand to bring it down here just with one hand, and uh, I can still lift it with one hand, so that's a good sign. Uh, what I did here, as you guys can see, I just showed you guys some of the edges here. I just ground everything down nice and flush. The edges here are pretty much rounded. Um, going across here, I'll probably... I'll probably hit that edge once more uh, before we get into the body filler um, along the side same thing nice and rounded here uh, that was really my only big big gap that I had um, so but that's okay like I can fill all that in like I say my original plan was to weld that whole seam but I think some uh, short strand fiberglass body filler is actually going to work just you know just a, a little bit better it'll be lighter and um, I think it'll last longer than tip, like just regular Bondo. Um, but I was actually uh, thinking as I was grinding this trunk down that I probably will separate this one into a part three. And the third part will be me uh, Bondoing, uh, body filling, and then sanding everything down. And then hopefully wrapping it. Like it shouldn't be too big a deal to wrap by the looks of it. Um, but as you can see, everything looks pretty good. I'm going to put that bucket behind just so I can give you guys an idea what it'll actually So look that's like. not the exact angle that the trunk will be sitting. It'll actually be a little more, a little more tilted like that. I don't know if that's in the shot. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's uh, coming along. Um, I don't know. Looking at it, I almost wish I made it go up a little bit more. But... Yeah, it's looking pretty good from down here. Um, so yeah, like I say, I'm probably going to put an end to this video just because uh, I figure this one's probably going to, it's got to be getting close to like 20 minutes um, with all of these little tiny clips and stuff like that. So, ooh, look at that, man. I know the haters said they weren't, you know, they subscribed to my channel so that they can see what not to do with their car. Yeah, I know. That sucks big time, man. I wouldn't want to put that shit on my car. Look at that. Ugly as hell. Anyways, man, what I'm going to do now is just put all of my tools away and uh, probably just give this a quick sand. And uh, next video that you guys see may not be the next video on the channel, but the next time you guys see this trunk, I will be body filling, sanding, and... Um, we're going to get this thing wrapped, man. Uh, it's been a long winter. I didn't think this was ever going to happen, me putting this, uh, this spoiler on the trunk because uh, it's been cold. It's been long. I don't really have a garage to work in. Uh, but we're making it happen, man, slowly but surely. So as always, man, I am your boy Dinali, a.k.a. Don Squally. Hopefully this wind ain't killing me right now. We got a little, like I say, a little body work to do here. But I'm pretty happy with the progress, man. So... If you guys enjoyed this one, don't forget to smash that like button. And as always, we're going to catch y'all at the next one, man.